on the hour, you have found the Lauren and Lori show. Uh, now you are you found our factor eight sales shot again, and I'm going to share my slides here in a second. These are fast paced and fun. And today we're talking about why isn't my team hitting quota? If you have asked yourself, is it my sales team or is it the economy? You are in the right place, folks. You are in the right place. So Lori and I are going to dig into all of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Keep it coming up as you're getting into the chat. You're very welcome. You found Lauren and Lori at our Factor 8 sales shop. We're talking about why isn't your team hitting quota and what to do about it. Please open up the chat, toggle it down to make sure you're talking to everybody. That's a tip I got from you, JB. And I want you to type in your city and your have to have on Thanksgiving. It might be on the table for dinner or, you know, it might be the, the who is it who plays every year in football? Every year, the turducken is, is, is the dishes, the lions and somebody else. Fix it for me in the chat. Let's get this party started. Here we go. If it's your first time joining me for our monthly sales shot, this is my company, Factor 8. We work with companies in all different industries, and we're all about helping frontline sellers, virtual only, not getting on a plane and carrying a bag, with those tactical skills to book more meetings and close more deals and push things through the pipeline. This is a look at where we play. Tiny little modules mapped up against the selling pipeline, and you'll see a whole bevy of development for sales managers to specialize in helping reps make successful transitions into managers. And here's a quick sneak peek at some real results that we get with these tactical tips in working on flawless execution and building phone confidence. So at Unitrans, we were working with ISRs, boom, 20% plus spike in conversion. At ZipRecruiter, we only worked with managers, and yet we found millions in pipeline build and a 21% increase in revenue on the teams we piloted with against the baseline. At Sage, we worked with BDRs and managers, almost a 50% improvement from lead to booked meeting held, which was a company record. So if you're looking for results like that, hit factory.com chat. We'll do an offline meeting, no hard sell. We'll see if we can help you. Now's the time because you got a budget for, for next year. I'm joined by the one and only Lori Richardson today. Da, da, da. Tell us about you and your company, Lori. Hey, Lauren. It's such a thrill to be here with you. I mean, I find any excuse to hang out with Lauren, and it's doubly good to have all you folks here as well. I run a sales strategy firm called Score More Sales, and what we do primarily is help companies figure out data behind their existing sales team, the people, the process, the pipeline, and leadership, and then uh, help with gaps and filling in those gaps and helping reinforce the strengths. So we also work with a pre-hire assessment tool. Some of you, I see some clients on, on here and we welcome you. Um, and we help because it's hard to hire good salespeople. That's one of the things we're gonna be talking about today. So really oh happy God. to be here. It's so, it's so hard. Like Lori, when we came up, we were joking as you guys joined us, by the way, that we're old. I'm going to leave it on this screen so that you can learn a little bit more while we do this. But I mean, the profile was college degree, two years experience, played a competitive sport. It's what we all hire. Good luck finding that now. We have to train it, right? We have to build it. We have to be careful about who we hire and we have to assess for the DNA because they're not coming with the experience and the skill. So we'll talk more about that as we go. Sales shots happen every month. We do rep topics. We do manager topics. We do enablement topics. These are the next three. Go to factorate.com forward slash shots. Sign up for the next three. Bring your team. This is free training. Now, I don't have time for the soapbox about the difference between webinars, edutainment, videos, and training. <laughs> it's so tempting right now. But my point is book 30 minutes afterwards. Come to the sales shot and then book a discussion afterwards. Take some ideas, talk about it, incorporate some adult learning. I'll stop the pitch there. Here we go. Shot number one. Is it the economy or is it my sales team? Put a hell yeah in chat if you have asked this question in the last year. And if I had the space, I would hell yeah a lot right now. It's top me. out there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in this section, we're going to talk about how to, how to answer these questions with evaluations, training, and performance management. So here we go. Drum roll plays, introducing Lori's scorecard evaluation. These are real results. And 
they're fascinating. Give us a quick look at quick talk about what we're looking at, Lauren. Yeah. So what I've come to learn is that there are 21 core sales competencies in hiring strong sales reps. And the reason it's so hard now, there were a lot of people downsized over the last number of months. You know, sales is a one profession where you have to deal with rejection, hostility, complexity. You know, there aren't many other roles like that. And so we know that, that we need to hire differently than we hire in other roles. And we look for will, the will to be successful, the sales DNA, what's in you, as well as those tactical skills that you you train on, Lauren. I love it. Yeah. I, I was just wondering, I've just put the question in chat. Say yes, if you do this right now, if you use some sort of assessment or evaluation, either at higher or the folks on the job. Cause I've, I love these. I think they're so important to use and hiring. I made my husband take one before I went on a second date. <laughs> like these are, there's some uncanny information that's available for sure. So I just want to do a quick follow-up. Lori, what's the difference between, like we've heard of will and skill. So I get will to sell. What's DNA? What's that mean? DNA, it, it involves some of the things like how someone handles rejection. Um, again, in a selling role, unlike any other role, I, I've had clients where one of their salespeople had three rejections in one day and he quit because he just couldn't take take it. Yeah. It was yeah. just too yeah. difficult. And so okay. that's not I a good it. candidate to have. Yeah, it's the hard job. stuff to move, right? Yeah. 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 All right. What's the biggest mistake you see in the reps we hire? The, well, the biggest mistake in general, I was just talking to somebody else about this yesterday, is that, we, and she was like, oh, she couldn't believe I said this, but people think that anyone can be a salesperson. Anyone can sell. It's just not true. Anyone can manage. Just not true. Just not true. Yeah, I have one into that for sure. I mean, listen, I we play in the green, okay? So this is a breakdown of Laura's tactical skills. And this is where my company, Factor 8, plays. And because I've been teaching people to sell, like tens of thousands of people over 20 years, I've fallen into that category thinking anybody can do it. But where they break down is the DNA. I can't handle the rejection or the grind or the pressure or whatever that is. So I really, really get that. Yeah. It's like professional athletes. You know, it, you can have all the skill in the world, but if you're not leading the team in the dressing, the locker room, you know, if you if you don't have that mindset for success, Bingo. you're going to have a loss and then you're going to lose the next games because you can't come back from defeat. Bingo. Yeah, 100 percent. So here's a question about tactics. I get this a lot. So at Factory, we specialize in basics, right? We teach 20 and 30 year olds who wear headsets. If you're a 50 year old million dollar salesperson getting on a plane to close deals, you don't need our training unless you you know suck at booking meetings. Right. But what happens sometimes is people are like, oh, I don't need them right? No, no, no. I hire the talent. So can you hire, like, have you seen people where you're assessing them where it's like, oh my God, they just nailed it. It's a perfect score on the green. Well, if, if they use a pre-hire tool, um, that is looking at skills and, and not personality, which is do people come in with all the skills is what I'm trying to ask. No. Um, oh, people come in, they can come in with a lot of the skills, but not all the skills. We, we all, I, I've been in this for four decades. I tell people for decades, no, four decades. <laughs> and, and I learn, I learn from my clients. You, you know, it's a people business. We can't know everything. I, I listen, I, I have to agree and thank God, right? Cause that keeps me in business. Yeah. <laughs> but what reps need tactical sales skillers, skills, pardon me. All sellers have gaps is what you're saying. And here's the thing, leaders, knowing it and doing it, very different things. So when we have some of that ego happen with us and our clients, especially new ones, it goes away very quickly when we introduce call recordings. So if you're having trouble with people with, you know, I do it all, we start classes by playing a recording of a call. You may know it, but did you just do it? Not many people don't cringe when you start that way. And man, does buy-in happen then. So I want to share this in our shot, number two, top sales challenges. So we do this survey almost annually at Factor 8, and this is especially about virtual sales and where people are struggling the most. I don't know. Any big surprises here for you, Lori? Researching and prospecting? That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. I thought structuring my day coming in at number two, I thought that was, it, it was clear it was anonymous survey. 
because people don't like to admit they suck at time management, but it's hard to make right. time for the calls, especially if you're spending all your time researching. But progressing deals, running virtual sales manager, bleh, virtual sales meetings, closing. And the one that didn't make it on here, but I hear a lot of is building value, especially virtually. So yeah. I have one other tip for my leaders and my enablement people. It's okay if you say cheers right now. Um, I, I appreciate the support in chat. Uh, just remember, please, that telling isn't teaching. Okay. So let's say you get an assessment or an evaluation back from Lori, and it's like all kinds of low scores. I've told them this a hundred times. What's happening right there is kind of a you problem because telling them and teaching them, not the same. Okay. There's this whole industry and profession around adult learning and how to make sure people remember this forgetting curve is showing you that telling isn't teaching. You tell them once you get the red line by the end of the week, they retain 10% or less of what you said. To get way up here on the green line, it's reinforcement, it's interaction, it's coaching, it's adult learning. So if you're going to try to fix skill gaps, don't do it with videos. I love that you come to the webinars, but it takes more than one way, right? This one way stuff, we have to interact with it. Bonus chaser, here are the top skills we see reps need when they're switching to virtual or embracing virtual. We love some of our new clients that are coming to us at Factory from the three PL worlds and the medical worlds and some of the industrial worlds where, you know what? We used to be more traditionally face-to-face. -face. Do these first with your teams. If you want to learn more about this, I'm going to put a QR code on the next page. We build custom certifications all day long for all kinds of different roles. If you're not sure what you need to be training them, whether you use us or not, book a meeting with me or my CRO, Ted. We'll help you through it. Okay, grab that QR code here. We will help you through it. If you have a small team and you just want to check out and you need a little bit of training or a little bit of budget left to spend, get 30% off with a six pack around filling the pipeline, factory.com pipe, or an annual subscription that leads to a certification for those closers on your team, factory.com forward slash AE. Don't forget the promo code. Let's move on to the shot number three. Let's talk process. I loved our kind of pre-show discussion about this. Can process fix DNA? Can it sub for skills? What should come first? So I'm going to stay on this slide and ask you a question one, Lori. Can process fix DNA? No. Uh, it can help. The, yeah. the problem with DNA is, you know, these are the inherent things, what I'm saying in my head, uh, the, the stories that I'm thinking like, oh, Lauren's not going to buy from me. I tried last year and I was unsuccessful, it's not gonna happen. Or, you know, Mondays suck, you know, all the, these negative things that we say in our head, which I call unsupportive beliefs. Uh, mm -hmm. And supportive beliefs are the things that are like, it's Monday, I got a new fresh start, I got five days ahead, or it's a short week, you know what? I'm gonna do twice as much every day. I'm gonna make up for Monday that I lost this week. And, um, or I worked on preparation Monday night, so I'm ready for the rest of the week. It, it, it's yeah. process is different than that, but process and and strong sales DNA are a, a killer combination. That's one plus one equals three, right? But yeah. the process of here's what I do when I come in Monday morning doesn't negate wah, wah, it's Monday morning. I hear I hear you loud and clear. All right, right. So let's break this down for people. I love this. All right. So as leaders, we have three major levers that we go and pull, right? Three major categories. What goes in the blank? It starts with P, chat it in for me. We've got blank and process and tech and tool. Siobhan is on way ahead. Right, girl, I look forward to seeing you later today, I hope. You're, <laughs> you're exactly right. There, I just wanted to give chance. April, I knew you'd be in there quickly. People, process, and technology. This is what we have to move the levers, okay? And I'm going to translate these for you. Call me out if you think it's unfair. Process is about consistency, Right. Tech and tools, it's usually about efficiency. How do I want them anymore? When we talk about people, that's where we're talking about quality. Okay. And I got to tell you right now that another soapbox for me out there is that we don't seem to have a process problem or an efficiency problem in sales. Folks, we loud and clear, three alarm fire have a quality problem. We all know it. Look at your goddamn inbox, right? I have a lot of automatically sent AI generated crappy emails filling up all of my channels. We have a quality problem and we're solving it 
with efficiency solutions. And you know how I know that? I'm gonna ask you a quiz question here, Lori. What do you think the ratio is of what we spend per rep on tools versus training? Uh, at least two to one, maybe it's worse than that. Nailed it, yeah, nailed it. That's exactly right. Everyone wants a tool to fix things. <laughs> And it's sexy and it's easy and it's fun. And I think we buy it for who we used to be as sellers, but that ain't the bag we're working with now. So that leads me to shot number four, folks. Just say no to shot number four, general life lesson. Buy, buy the training before the tools, buy the assessment before the training, okay? Do it right. Let's go out there and fix quality problems together. And it might mean you have to have a little talk with leaders. It might mean you have to change some line items in your budgets, but I'm going to teach you a fun way to have this conversation, and maybe it's going to make something click for you. Give me feedback in the notes. It's about talking football. Okay. A lot of AI solutions are happening. Lori, have you been approached by any who want to get like your coaching and your brain oh. into the yeah. on-demand? Yeah. AI, Lori. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They could have at least done it differently and approached us with different names. It's like yeah. AI. Lori. Yeah. Thanks. So I'll be turned into an avatar chat bot that will give reps real-time coaching. Yeah. At which point I say real-time coaching is a misnomer. There is no real-time coaching, right? Like imagine, imagine if you were in the middle of a sales call and you have a million things happening in your head and you're nervous because you're young and you're new. And then somebody, a voice in your head is saying, hey, what you need to do now is qualify. Okay. I'm going to give you an analogy. Imagine that in football, right? Imagine there was a pop-up display inside the helmet of the future that also prevented concussions. And in it, it told the quarterback, hey, I'm reading the play. I know everything about the defense. I've done all the game tape. It's time to juke left and run the swim play. I just made up those words, by the way. I don't know if that's a real thing. But uh, the only people in the world who could handle that are these guys, okay? Real-time pivots require mastery of basics. And I don't see that out there. Do, are, do the assessments tell you something different, Lori? Do we have masters of tactical and technical skills of sales out there? We have a small percentage. I mean, there, there's about 6%, according to the 2.4 plus million uh, of these assessments and tools that I've seen show a top percentage of, of those real top sellers mastery yeah yeah, yeah. there's a whole so if you big think gap your in the team, middle yeah. yeah if you think your team's in the 2.4 percent you you chat it out loud and proud right now but most of us are dealing with this there's high turnover in sales and they're young kids so imagine the pop-up display with a peewee league right this little kid you're going to tell him to swing left and juke right i think i just made that up again that like come on it takes fluency it takes ten thousand hours to master something folks so if you're looking at how do I help my sellers? Our advice is find out where they have gaps and help them fill the gaps on basic execution and quality. Because right now, quality interactions and conversations are a huge effing differentiator. There you go. So our point is look for the DNA and hire it. Train the skills, then give them the tools. But let's right. stop solving quality problems with efficiency tools. Thank you for that soapbox. Hopefully everybody takes that back during budgeting season. So next section, skim me a hell yeah if you've asked this. Is it the economy or is it my leader or my managers? Mm, yikes. So Lori, do all sellers make good managers and can some good leaders have not been sellers? Most sellers do not make good managers initially they sometimes learn and they they get training hopefully from somebody in, in their organization or outside. less than 30 percent have it by the way less than 30 percent of us have manager training yeah and and the inherent skills that make top managers are not the same as what top sellers have it, they're very different we're much more I, I find they compete yeah yeah yeah, I yeah. Think they compete. but yeah and can good leaders be good managers if they were not sellers i'd say it's hard it's hard to do because as a seller and i was one for many years you know we look to our leader who has experience in sales they have background and knowledge of what i'm going through what i'm dealing with and not some guy or gal that they just moved in and said this is your new boss 
I will tell you, yeah, it, it, you're not wrong. It's really hard. That was me. I was brought in from the outside. And the pain of that first year of being a sales manager, having not sold on that team or in that industry or in that anything uh, before. I mean, the pain was so fresh that literally 30 years later, when I got out of corporate America, I came and wrote training on how to change, how to be a great frontline sales manager and start when I started factory. But it's really important that we do invest in our managers, right? Because they own every single deal and rep in your company. But guess what percent fail? Chat in for me really quick. It's a number between one and 100. What percent of managers fail in their first two years, according to Corporate Executive Board? Anybody give me a number quick so I can move on. We're going to run out of time. 87%, 65, 50, I love it, 35. Did you know that 27.5% of all statistics are made up on the spot? And they sound better if you put a decimal point in them. It's 60% is the answer, and it's not a big surprise. So, Laura, let's look at this. The will, the DNA, and the skill on managers. Do, do more companies assess their managers than their reps? Uh, we like it when people evaluate all of their team. So all we, we yeah. want to see the managers and the reps because then we can see what the issues are. It's it's Makes hard sense. to pinpoint if you do one or the other, but at the very least, I would love to see the managers uh, evaluated. So yeah. Well, what and are the big trends that you see, right? We're, I mean, we're, we're looking at we're, this. We're looking for strong will. We're looking for motivation and people who take responsibility have a, a positive upbeat outlook um yeah. and that will to manage is um i gotta tell you it's the biggest secret we hear from managers right we get them in training and hopefully sometime in their first two years and they tell us after a couple of days when they trust us like i think i need a new manager i don't think i should be here i miss sales yeah so that it's an important one to look for and, and how about dna is there a big trend here that we want to look for yeah, I mean it's it's the same. We're looking for all of those things that I I use a car analogy like under the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that we have people who are you know very very much able to hold people accountable. We want we need managers who have a strong self worth who you know see that in others, and so we're looking for all those kinds of things. Yeah. And it's tough, right? We've talked yeah. about the fact that you can't, you can train DNA over long periods of time, but it's tough. It's not as easy to move as the tactical. And by the way, we have built courses for this. When you're wondering about people's ability to set goals, to hold people accountable, to coach, to have those tough conversations, and you're not sure where to go, or you uncover a gap, you owe it to them to give them some skills. Yeah, and that. even so, things like the need for approval. I mean, it's oh, in us as humans, and that's it's something huge. Yeah. It's one of the top management failures is that need for approval. We talk about that. Good segue. Thank you. A lot in Girls Club. If you haven't heard of it before, this is my passion project. Lori helped me start it. It's a six month certification program that helps ICs in any revenue related career move into management. So if you're a woman looking at this right now, thinking maybe someday, but not now, you're exactly who we're looking for. We have a 70% promotion rate. We surround people with that positive energy and attitude and mental. We're building strong sales DNA along with the skills. It's so important. It's a cool, cool program. Grab this QR code before it's gone because we are saving seats for our 2025 cohort. All right, let's talk about management skills. What are we seeing in the tactics? These are the ones that we can really actually change, right? Yeah. And we find that coaching, motivating, accountability are the most important uh, of, of these shown. Um, there are areas that we don't tend to be overly strong in as, as managers. And we, we need to be taught how, how to coach and how to motivate and how to hold people accountable. You know, Lauren, we've had many conversations about the lack of accountability. And once we have accountability in place, it, it just seems to get the rest of that process going. It, it's the foundation for everything. And also I'll tell you, Lori, it, it's the understatement of the year that it's difficult to teach people how to coach. It's It, it used to be like a one shot, two hour course. We did at Factor 8 and look at the lineup now on the screen, folks. It takes a lot to shift that behavior. So if you're wondering why coaching isn't happening or why reps aren't loving it or why results aren't improving, top three issues, you need to train your managers how to coach. Here's a little bonus for you as well. Um, 
all kinds of skills that managers need. Amy, I think you put in there a download of a brochure, but you can also grab this QR code to get this list. If you're trying to figure out what to train your managers, if you're building it yourself, if you're looking for free stuff, if you're looking for partners besides us, use this list and start running. The key here that I think we've been talking about, Lori, I just used this slide in another presentation, is that when, it, when, when we're talking about the tactics and the stuff that's in our control, right? The people and the skills and the quality. All too often, we're dealing with the great big red divide, right? This yeah. is where the Peter principle happens. You know what you know. And for some of us, we're lucky that we even know what we don't know. That's where it stops. We don't know what we don't know. And that's when it's important to look at assessments. What am I missing? What are the blind spots with my team? That's when it's important to bring in outside skills. Here's stuff you never even thought of that we've collected yeah. from past practices. Yeah, I saw Siobhan's comment. Siobhan is a leader in sales enablement, by the way. We're happy to have her here. Um, but she said really high performers do not make good managers because they are unconscious competence. They Bingo. may not be able to tell people why they're a high performer. Right? I call it the art and the science. The best ones, they're artists and they can't freaking teach it. Siobhan, I knew I love you. That's great. I can't wait to, I can't wait to talk more trends with you. So speaking of trends, I'm just going to remind you one more time. Training gets results, whether it's us or somebody else. Go budget for training. And look, there's a tool. So I've done the research for you about what companies budget for training. Okay, this isn't what I'm asking you to spend with us. I'm just saying, what should you be budgeting? Let's fix that inequity between tools and training. There is a free download for you. Factorate.com forward slash budget. Can I add one thing? Please. There and there are programs in most states that have training where government training um, you can qualify for in your company. You can get reimbursements for yeah. that training. In fact, Factor 8's been wholly approved as an apprentice, right? Yeah. Sales apprenticeships are real. They will pay for the training. We're happy to talk to you about that too. But if you'd like to talk with Lori and you've got an offer here, tell us what it is. Yeah, so we're happy to talk to people who want to know more about a pre-hire assessment. They want to know about evaluating their team or they just want to schedule a call and talk. Happy to do that. And um, it's been great being here with you today. Yay. I know it went fast, didn't it? We got one minute left. Just going to yeah. remind you, if you haven't booked your SKO speaker yet, I love doing these. And if you're a sales shot regular, you understand the energy and the fun that we have. So check us out at, there's my friend JB right there factory.com forward slash speak. And then here's my QR code. If you need some insights on team development, if you want to know what to budget, if you're not sure about management training, like I said, less than 30% of companies have it because the ROI isn't there. You don't have as many managers as reps. It's okay. We got you covered. We got the programs. No sales, just chats, just help. You can book a meeting. It's going to come to the first available between myself and our CRO, Ted Martin. And of course, there's Lori in the corner. How do folks get a hold of you? They can find me on LinkedIn. There you <laughs> That's go. That's the best way. Most you people can't know miss where her. find me. I'm all you over. I love it. I just put Lori in a corner. I really yeah. that was, don't, don't put me in the corner. <laughs> Folks, we hope to see you next month on the sales shot. I'm going to hang around for just a moment. So will Lori. If you've got questions, we will be here. But otherwise, <laughs> sayonara. Have a fabulous turkey, cranberry sauce, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and football day. Yeah, so good. Thanks, Lauren.